mention too, in case you guys don't know, that I'm little by little uh, migrating all of these from my YouTube page to podcasts. And I have about 15 or 16 of these shows going back over a year as podcasts now. And um, I'm kind of making my way through them. So check it out. You know, if podcasts are more convenient, feel free to download the podcasts. I have, you know, some of the earlier ones and a couple of the more recent ones with like Todd Zuckerman and Gavin Harrison as podcasts. So collect them all and tell your friends. All right. So anyway, um, I think that's about it for me in terms of a, uh, an update. And I will say again, it's a pleasure to see you all today. It's a great turnout on a, on a Tuesday afternoon. So without further ado, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I'm going to welcome the one and only Mike Mangini. And here he is. Hey, Johnny <laughs> D. And there you are. Right here. And, there, and there you are. Yeah, baby. I, I have to tell you, we watched Austin Powers a couple of weeks ago, the original Austin Powers, <laughs> and I always think of you. I always think of you. Well, I went off on that one for years. There's so many, <laughs> good, so many good lines, and you know, it's just, yeah, it's yeah. It's not a, I think no, I think enough. you probably for like, I, I'm guessing for like ten years, you you would go, oh, behave, you know? Yeah, just like, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, kind of, I kind of beat that one. Uh, Beat the dead horse, so to speak. It's so no, much fun. That's, I know, I know. It's so good to see you. And and I, we've been I, so people watching this will know. Mike and I have stayed in touch, um, threatening to get together, but texting a ton. And and we will get together because we have to have a bottle of Shiraz. And uh, I know it's like <laughs> it's like you're saying this is like legitimate proof when I want to just see so many people and get together and the stuff just, you know, responsibilities keep hitting and then they overlap yeah. and it can't happen. So like, you approve that, that statement, <laughs> proof that it, I'm trying. And then no, and like, and someone will think, Oh, you just said, you don't want to hang out. You got to make the time. It's like, no, that's not what it is. I just, it's I happened, you know, and it doesn't work. And then someone else is not available. And then, you know, other stuff gets in the way. Anyway, well, no, I but I, I, I was going to say, I've been noticing too that you've been more, um, or maybe it's just like, I don't know how it even works on Facebook with the feeds, but I've been seeing more of your um, feed or feeds, I should say, lately. And, and it looks like you're getting more active with your teaching, which is great, which is, you know, if, yeah. if you could say there's a plus side to all this stuff. Well, yeah, it's pretty amazing that, um, that I'm fortunate enough to have loved it before um, because, and this can open up so much, so many fun discussions, but I loved teaching not just because of the feeling of helping people, but the feeling of letting them know that they helped me too. Like I learned yeah. so much from it, you know, and not just that, that I have to research and really have my act together being responsible for people and directing them because this, there could be, there could be, information out there that's driving people into getting their wrists injured and they'll never know it don't know it until it's too late or whatever it is that you, you don't know what's out there because people are built differently it's a very it's a tough call but anyway it's not yeah. only helping and doing the research because then it you know spares me these injuries and helps me and allows me to get better but people that have their own unique view it's like anything and everything that goes into making each of us what we are that day is mm -hmm. from our experiences. So one experience can't be like the other one. It doesn't mean relativism is any good, but relativity is right, meaning that each person's relative experience is their own. And I, I get that. Like, I'll get this view on something I never would have thought of. So having a love for it and I even identifying why I love it so much is a blessing. And so coming into it again, you know, it's not been something to do to do it. It's been something yeah. that I'm like, Oh boy, I get to do this again. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm excited. I, I, I make all kinds of posts and um, I got people helping me too, just to, uh, for, for many different reasons, just to keep up with things. You know, there's different sites yeah. that have interfaces that integrate and 
And then there's, you know, there's always, I have to keep the pages clean. I mean, it's like, I want kids coming to my pages. So we got to, well, they got to like get rid of anything, anybody that's not friendly or like that. Yeah. We just don't yeah. want that on the site. And it's like, it's, it's the right thing to do is to just blast them up. So I don't know. I got to do it. Sometimes it's not all, it's not done perfectly, you know, but um, then like, yeah, whatever it is, it's a delicate thing. But uh, anyway, I am more active and yes, um, it's, it's, it's purposeful, but I love it. That's great. I, and I was going to say too, I mean, for the last 10 or really 11 years, really, I guess, right. 2010, well, at least 10 years anyway, you've been so busy with, you know, your day job, so to speak. And, uh, and you know, I, I, like I said, life. I mean, it's, it would life. Yeah. That, that it's, uh, I know you'd love to be on the road and, and that's knowing you the way I know you, you, you never sit still. You're never one to want to just, unless you've been on tour for four months, you know, yeah. you'll, you'll yeah. relax, but, but you're not one to just kind of go, ah, you know, I'm going to just, you, you like to work. You like to stay busy. So I know. And part of that is knowing how to rest. So, you know, the, the, the touring, the sleep is so important and you have to, well, it's, a, it's something that has to be managed. You can't just, just exist. You gotta, yeah. you gotta look at yeah. your schedule, but yeah, you're right. Um, I don't like to just hang and do nothing. And yeah, you're right. The day job, so to speak, keeps me busy beyond, beyond what it appears to be. You know, yeah. it's like I practice the least amount of drums ever. And you would think that I have a job that allow me to practice the most amount of drums ever. But why is that the case? When you look at what it takes, and in my case, I have a lot to do with the production of the band. Um, it takes me three months to get ready for a tour with all that. And now, preparing out, I don't even have those three months. So guess what I'm going to be doing all the time? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's interesting that you say that, Mike. I was going to ask you... Um, kind of what your routine is these days as far as like lately then you've probably had more time to practice to actually um, sit down and, and get into some sort of a routine or, or not maybe not with other stuff I don't know I've, I've had the choice I've had the yeah. choice to do it uh, and I have chosen it in little pieces in other words it's not six or eight hours a day it's not four hours a day it's 35 to 50 minutes three times a week at the most. But the systems that I've stumbled on are so, it's like they are, I, they magnify your, your, your progress. They're like nuclear because of the way that I've learned through my cognitive studies to organize my senses of sight, hearing, and touch. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference within my teaching and why it's not because it's not me it's the system I'm using. And if that system has done these things for me, well, why wouldn't they do these things for everybody? And the fact is, and you could probably vouch for it with all the students of mine that you know, it does work for them because the system's yeah. great. So, um, you know, I, 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 also, I also turn on the jets while I'm teaching. I am improving while I'm teaching. I'm improving while I'm learning songs. I'm improving because I'm actually focusing on mechanics. But here's the bottom line, John, is that I've isolated it down to this. Um, I've chopped down my need to practice because I've taken away the creativity and a lot of the things that I, I put that into the teaching. I put that into my demonstrations. I put that into the video making that really takes most of the time. Uh, and recording and editing is just out of control how long that takes. Yeah. No, but um, I've isolated my practice into, you know what? I'm constantly improve in accuracy, velocity, or speed, which, which it takes me so much effort just to increase my a little bit of the effort and I'll get worse. So that's all I'm doing. Good. 
I don't know what's going. My internet just, it just got a note that Are you with I'm me? still with you. Yeah. Sorry. I said my internet is unstable, but it seems to be, I'm sorry. It seems to okay. be back now. Sorry about that. You know, it's funny. We should, <laughs> there should be personal message bubbles get to go. I am unstable right now. <laughs> well, I'll just, it's, it's like, big. I know it's, it's par for the course. I'll just share with everybody. I was telling Mike offline that, we woke up this morning here to find that um, we have no, I think I might've said this before we went live too, but anyway, if I didn't, we have no water and, and uh, I, the, the pump to the well isn't working. So why not have the internet go down too? I, you know, yeah. anyway, sorry. No, but what, so what you're saying, I think is very, is, is very interesting and very, I think almost fortuitous, uh, you know, fortuitous for anybody who wants to study with you right now, this would be, this would be the time, the best opportunity to kind of, I wouldn't say get your undivided attention, but, but to really be able to um, take advantage of this situation of your availability, I guess, if nothing else. It, it, it is, and it's true, and, and I've been posting more because I don't see it. There's, there's, a, there's an aspect of real people where things uh, or some things are in their mind, some things are real. It's a tough call, but there's a sense of, uh, you know, self-promotion and all that. But it's, it's not. It's not a bad thing. I think it could be done in a genuine way, where it's like, hey, I'm just letting you know that I'm available for this, and I'm doing this, and I happen to like it, and you know, it's exactly really portable, and all these things. Versus, you know, whole spam email thing you get hit with buy this buy that buy this buy that buy this like stop stop you know yeah. i don't yeah. want to hear that or i don't want to hear it i i want to want to be aware of it but i don't want to get pummeled with it so um i like to chain that thank you because it's informing people um of what i'm doing but my so it's great thanks well that's and and so and and people that want to reach you can contact you through like your Facebook page. Is that is that a good way for people to reach you? Essentially, yeah, because I am interactive there. Um, and the thing about my my sign up system is it's automated, so. It Oh, man, I can't believe the internet today. No. Oh, Mike, I... oh, it's something that I'm evolving to make it simple to understand what I'm doing, where I'm doing it, and how I'm doing it, because I'm making sure to put the links in many places so that you don't have to know I mean, you don't have to know about it just to sign up only because the sign up and registration website. Do you understand what I mean? Like I'm putting it out there in places. But. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe yeah. at the end of this, I'll, I'll put, if there's a link that you want to send me, um, I can, I can plug in it at the end of this thing on, on Facebook. And when I put it up onto YouTube as well. Great. Great. Well, I do apologize if, if, if people, if, yeah, if you're getting a little, um, are you still there, Mike? You, you getting me okay? Yeah. Boy. Okay. Good, good, good. Yeah. Okay. Um, got a lot of folks watching and I apologize if it's, if the internet's a little, uh, a little kaflooey here, but we'll, we'll power through. I was just going to say just to, to just jump backwards a little bit. Um, our history, I think, I, I love our history. I love our, our long, long friendship. And I, I often think about with a big smile on my face, the first time I, I heard about you was from our friend, Freddie G, Freddie Gilfeather. Um, back in the eighties, uh, I was still living in California, but I remember him telling me there's a guy you have to meet that is, you know, I was a big fan of Terry Bozio at the time. And, and I think you were playing a Roto Tom set maybe at that time. Uh, 
Oh, I think we I think we got the internet <laughs> working against us today. Oh man. Oh boy. Oh, Mike, are you back? Oh, <laughs> I heard you for a second. Oh boy. Okay. <sighs> Mike, you there? Okay. Uh, Mike, you hearing me now? Hang on one second, Mike. I'm just checking to see. Can you hear me now, Mike? Yeah, okay. I think, I guess the signal is not great. How about now? Can you hear me now, Mike? These are the chances you take when you do it live. Okay, Mike's coming back, everybody. I do apologize for this internet situation. Uh, always a concern, concern when I'm down here in the vineyard that this is gonna happen. Um, it had been working fine up till now, so I don't know why it chose to do this. Uh, reschedule this. Uh, John Bates, thank you. If you're re if you're hearing me, I appreciate that. I thought about trying something like that. Um, hey, Mike. Unmute, okay. unmute, unmute. This is like my okay. eyes getting slow too. All right, we're good. We're good. We're good. Um, my Does friend, anyone John have any Bates. questions? Oh. Let's see. There's lots of comments. Lots of comments here. Um, my friend John Bates, who's on the vineyard, also said suggested maybe rebooting my computer. Uh, but it, I, let's maybe just we can power through this and it's okay. It seem okay. All right. Yep. Okay. Mike is back. Okay. Everybody's saying Mike is back. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, Mike Rogello is saying, uh, do you know Mike Rogello, Mike Mangini? He said uh, his, I have to see. You Go might ahead, know what? him from, from Freddie's store. He said, my father played, played with a trumpet player named Tommy Dumont in Waltham, a good friend of the family. I think Tommy said he had Mike in high school. Does he recall? Tommy Dumas. Yes, I recall. Oh, cool. Yes. Dumas. D-U-M-A-S. He was oh, our, he was a band director. Very cool. How about that? Yeah. 
And Carmina says she's a fan of yours going back to the Rick Berlin band. And that's when I, when I met you, I was, I was starting to say that's when I, when I met you in 88 or 89, you were playing in the Rick Berlin band. And can I tell this story? I remember going to see you at the channel for the first time. And I, I, I don't want to embarrass you, but this is maybe something you've, it's public that you've told people. Don't, you're then rich- don't. <laughs> okay. no, all right. No, your ritual before you played gigs in those days had to do with, um, never mind. You, you just had a lot of nerves. You were very nervous. I'm losing you. That's, it's okay. You know what? Let's, yeah. um, you heard me now? I, uh, it's a really compromised connection, but we can get through it if we leave each other the space to. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. This, I've never had this happen. I'm so sorry, Mike. This is crazy. All right. Um, Michael Cafaso has a question. Can you tell us about the audition recording you sent I- to Frank Zappa? Hi, Mike. I hope you're well. He's a great drummer. Oh, my yeah. gosh. He's so good. Um, he's good. Oh, gosh, you studied with me in 89 or something. And, uh, oh, my gosh. Um, I sent an audition tape to Steve Vai to be in Steve Vai, never to Frank Zappa. I never knew Frank. I never had any connection to him, nothing whatsoever, except that Steve Vai would always tell me that I would have had a really good time playing with Frank, which was extremely, you know, flattering because quite frankly, um, I, that might've been like just way too much with all the, it just, uh, I don't know that that's like, I don't know. Steve seems to think I would have done well, but I, I don't, I don't know about that, <laughs> <laughs> but the audition tape for Steve Vai you know, the, uh, the audition tape for Steve Vai um, was something where <clears throat> I picked a song to video record and mimic, which I just put on my Instagram and Facebook, actually, because people took it from my old website, up to my VHS tape. But anyway, I made that and a couple other things. Um, and the, the important aspect of that, that you know, helped me throughout my career was showing someone else that I was willing to do what they needed to be done. In other words, by learning a song note for note, it was a sign of respect to make people feel comfortable that I'm not going to come in because I could destroy their songs (laughs) and destroy the song and all kinds of drumming stuff that they necessarily don't want or don't like. So that's the importance of it. But It is a lot of work to memorize every single hit in a song. It's just brutal. But that's the the crux of it, Mike. And it was by. And it worked. Cool. That's that's great. That's great. Um, I I started to say when I met you, you were playing with Rick Berlin. And that's, that's when we first met. And not long after that, or I think it was... Maybe you were already, we brought you, I'd signed you to Zildjian at that point, but, um, but I'd heard so much about you. And I just remember seeing you play for the first time and being like everybody else, just completely, completely floored. Um, and then from there, it was extreme around 93 or 94. Is that about when? Yeah. 94. 94. Yeah. Um, and I, I just, yeah, be, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, Mike, and, and I just, a couple of little notes that I made, I was thinking about 25 years ago. I think it was the first clinic tour that you ever did. We went out on a clinic tour in 1996. And we were you carrying. And I, yeah, 96, 97. Yeah. 90, yeah, yeah. And, and we were, we were carrying. Like a, a lot of the drums, we took like roto toms and Remo drums with us because a lot of the dealers didn't stock them, and and having so much fun, so much fun. <laughs> you know, so much fun. Speaking of that, you 
Mr. Johnny D, turned me into a dessert person <clears throat> because you are a nut when it comes to desserts to the point that you'd pull that car over and go, have you ever had the pies at whatever the place was in California? And I'm like, no, I mean, I, you know, I, for whatever reason, it's not that I dislike sweets and desserts. I just don't, I've never eaten a lot of them. Maybe because my, you know, Italian my relatives stuffed so much food down my throat, I had no room for anything else, okay? <laughs> but maybe that was where the habit was, was formed. I don't know. But you turned me into, like, a pie guy for a while. And I just want you to know that I got my discipline back. For example, I will show you. I will show you. Hold on. I will show uh. you that that... That one bag, one bag of salted caramel goodies lasts me like two months. That's discipline. Uh -huh. <laughs> I couldn't do that. And, and I wonder, can you, and you can, well, you know, what's funny is, you know, I have information in that um, and stuff in that. Uh, cabinet space back there, but yet I pulled out salted caramels. <laughs> right, right. It's good. Uh, well, and what I remember most about that, you know, besides the fun that we had, and I do remember how much we ate and, and all, you know, sweets and, and everywhere we went, I feel like, you know, we, we'd have to stop at some <clears throat> diner or something afterward and get sweets. But what I remember was coming away and and I, I you know at the time you were you were giving private lessons in in the Boston area and you know you were playing in, in bands and and touring but you were you still made time for lessons but what I learned at that point in 1996-97 having done a million clinic tours with other drummers was you're an amazing educator you like you have the goods to to like go out there and and present a curriculum and an actual like you would you would come there not to go watch how fast I can play all this stuff. And it was like, I'm going to, you know, and, and you with, with your hands and everything, the way I'm doing it right now, it's like, I'm going to teach you things. You're going to leave here and you're going to know some things when you leave here tonight. And, and, and I think that was amazing that you did that and, and you, and it worked. Thank you. Um, it's because I felt a responsibility when I was first asked by people at the music complex, you know, to give them lessons. And the bottom line is that I was slightly taken back and was a little bit afraid to do it because um, I felt a sense of responsibility. In other words, I didn't want to direct somebody into a street where you're going to drive down that street and then be attacked or something's going to happen to you. You know, it's like... Yeah. Um, uh, I wanted to be responsible, so I wanted to really learn, so I took it very seriously from the get-go, and it was just so rewarding to, to do it, and I found again, and I'd say it again, that it forced me to learn so much more, and it forced me to really have that sense of responsibility, which then made me learn, so I ended up better off, and then I ended up, you know, a student that, you know, maybe from the outside, Someone else might think, well, they're not going to be able to teach you anything. Well, you're wrong because they actually had a view that I didn't have. And that's mm -hmm. how, you know, my systems developed because it was from observational data. I mean, then that's why they work because I won't teach something unless I know it's scientific method. It's 100% foolproof that it will work for anybody and everybody, save those rare cases that maybe there's a, a brain that doesn't do something or a body that just doesn't do something, not because of them, because of some kind of anomaly. Well, there's nothing we could do about that, but that was the thing that um, was important to me. So that's why you witnessed that as I, I took it seriously and I'm still evolving it and still, you know, with all the zoom classes and people are reaching me from all over the planet. And it's, mm. that's, that's crazy because you know, it's like they don't have to get on a plane. They don't have to buy a hotel. 
They don't have to deal with all the time it takes to do it. They just pay a small fee and get online, and there I am. So yeah. I think it's a win-win for everybody. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's great. That's great. It's, I'm so glad you're able to do this. You have the time, at least for now, until you know things get back to normal. And and I guess I would say to anybody who's interested, now now would be the time to jump on this because that opportunity may not exist, you know, a few months from now. And uh, just a couple more questions, Mike. Too uh, someone, Mike Albano, aka aka Stephen Michael Sorum asked if you're um this is i made a note about this because i i remember the modern drummer festival that you played at where you played half of your performance was left-handed or some portion of it you played a zeppelin set complete lefty on the drum kit i'm I'm playing like this but you you actually set up lefty and he's asking if you're naturally left-handed um and i think i know the answer to that question which is no correct That, that is correct. And um, I was trying to say something. When people do things, sometimes they're trying to say something, whatever. So um, uh, there was, there was a couple of, there was a couple of uh, intentions behind my doing that. The first thing is that I played to the actual Led Zeppelin tracks with the drums. They weren't drumless. Right. I was asked by everybody where I got, including Dennis Chambers, Dennis asked me where I got the drumless tracks, and I said, they're not drumless. And you know Dennis. He's a, yeah. He tells you the truth. So he's, he, yeah. he was really kind to me. But the whole thing is that, no, I'm not naturally lefty, and that's why I teach and do what I do so I can teach people how to use their body. But, Johnny, the bottom line, my real intent was that since you're a lefty and you were there and you signed me to Zildjian, I was just trying to impress you. <laughs> well, you did that a long time ago, way before that. But man, I left there going like, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. That was, uh, everybody in the room was compl- were like, what you wanna- is he doing? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, Can and I- you want to know what? Um, what? The, you're welcome. The, the, go ahead. The other thing is that the other thing is that by my using Led Zeppelin, I ensured that people there could fully enjoy it, and that um, you know nobody can can video record and sell Led Zeppelin. That's yeah. That's right. That's yeah. You're right. You're so, absolutely right. You know. Yeah, I, 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 I actually really wanted to feel um, in the moment with everybody in that place. And, you know, that was like a derivative thing that I was like, oh, well, gosh, I, you know, didn't really think of that necessarily. You know, it's like, oh. Oh, I, I wonder if this was going to be able to be seen by everybody. You know, that I kind of realized at one point, I was like, man, I don't think so. But whatever it is now, well, I'm going to go out and enjoy it fully. But I don't know that. But anyway, I, I'm telling you because the whole, sometimes the whole cell phone in the face thing is so mm-hmm. detrimental to musicians that the people doing it don't realize that they're hurting their own enjoyment by compromising the artist on stage by sticking a cell phone you know in in your face because it's like you think about that and you know it's like oh it's part of the deal it's like really by what rule book is it part of the deal who makes up these relativistic rules you know in their own minds but the bottom line is it affects artists and most of the time people that hold up a cell phone at a concert where the artists can see it are absolutely compromising their own joy. And Mm -hmm. then what, you know, and there's a whole group of people with really ill intent that go out and put people making mistakes and they put it out there and then they use it for negativity. It's a whole pile of, of stuff done for all the wrong reasons. Meaning if somebody wanted to film it just to remember a little something, then you would see this stuff on YouTube. 
But people do it and they have to, you know, show that they can be important too. And look what I look what I got. And they're feeling without permission. They're compromising the artists. And everybody loses from it. You know, yeah. even ones that that, um, uh, that view and don't get the full impact of what happened and the real sound and all that. So like like that yeah. Zeppelin thing, thank I'm glad it's not out there on YouTube. I'm glad that nobody has it. Maybe but me or whoever. And um, <laughs> you know the bottom line is that it gave me it gave me that joy. It gave me that you know, the sound of that that giant bass drum, just hitting that bass drum like that and playing cashmere and black dog and um, uh, the wonton song and, you know, all of, of the tunes that and the snippets of the best parts that I think all of us drummers like was so, so rewarding for me. And to feel that drum kit make, you know, make my coma sikama shake was just awesome. I loved every yeah. minute of it. Yeah. We did too. I, you know, every, everybody in the audience, everybody had, you know, sold out venue, got that same, got exactly what you wanted them to get out of it. You, you know what I mean? It was exactly, it was like, you know, I mean, who, who doesn't want to listen to John Bonham to begin with, you know? And, and then I forgot about the fact that, that, um, the tracks were, were, had the drum tracks in them. Like they weren't drumless. So you were playing exactly you know, to exactly what John Bonham played, you know, perfectly in sync. And, and, uh, yeah, that was, that was an even bigger part of it too. I thought, um, I just, I have to, I have to say, um, it's, it's a, a sign of respect. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, t you made me think about Dennis. I, I, I remember, um, gosh, I don't know what year it was. It was sometime in the nineties, you and Dennis, I know you guys did a lot of stuff together, like Pearl Zildjian type, um, clinics and things like that. And I feel like we were in Long Island at a, at a drum clinic and with you and Dennis together. And this, I think might've been the first time you guys played together. And he knew, he knew you, you guys had met before. Probably like when he'd come to Boston um, and, you know, Dennis, you know, he, he's, he's aware of who other drummers are too. And he, I think he knew of your, of your reputation, so to speak. Um, but anyway, do you remember that he, he, he would not go on after you. He insisted on going on before you. And I think every time since then he's done that. <laughs> and he's, he, he said, I'm not going um, on after this guy. <laughs> you know, all right. So first of all, <clears throat> yes, he has done that most, most of the time. Not, not every single time. And he met single, me okay. in Baltimore. He met me okay. in Baltimore. Um, and um, he, we were doing sound check and that's when he insisted on flipping the bill. And um, the bottom line of that is that that's Dennis for you, meaning, no, I have no right to go on last. You know it. I know it. The people out there know it. It's all good. It's all good. It's, I have no right going on last with that guy. I mean, A, um, he, is as, he is in the group of players that you just – you don't say this better. You don't say this better at all. You just yeah, have this group yeah. of drummers that all do something so strongly and so well that everyone that knows, everyone that knows, nobody else can do. Nobody else is going to sound like, nobody else should even try. You could be inspired. I'm inspired by all, all my peer buddies, and you know how I get along with all these other drummers that we know. And you know Absolutely. from talking yeah. to me that I could name something every one of them does. They do it better than I do. They do it with confidence. And thank God that they do it, and they do it with some gusto because I need them to. In other words, I need all these 
players to be their best, to play well. And Dennis is like that. Dennis has said that to me. Dennis on stage has, has barked out things for me to play that he would like to see. He'll literally say something. He's done it numerous <laughs> times. And that's a sign of the kind of human being of the kind of human being that is on this planet that is the greatest kind of human being to be on the planet, the people you want more people to be like, uh, Dennis Chambers. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. I know, I know. He's such a big fan of yours, and, and you're such a big fan of his. And he's, you know, and right from, I feel like, from almost the beginning, like he when you guys met whenever that was sometime in the nineties, you know, he, he's just been, you know, he's, he's that kind of guy when he, when he likes you and I, I wouldn't, I, not to say that he's helped you along the way, but he's been so supportive. He loves playing with you. He loves when you guys are together doing, he loves hanging with you. I know that, you know, I mean, I've been there for some of those, you know, hangs with. He has him. helped me. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I know. I know. No, no. Yeah, but Johnny, he has helped me. He's helped me tremendously. First of all, he's been a model human being. How about that? That's the yeah, most important yeah. thing of all. Um, the next thing is that, again, you and I and everybody out there knows, and anyone that's played with Dennis knows, uh, or, or you've attended a clinic, when Dennis Chambers walks out to the drum set, it's that first 60 seconds that he plays – that makes everyone else say, I'm not going out there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, because it's just. <laughs> and, and, that, and that has been, that has been a tremendous help to me because he's, he's saying something. And as a friend, he's saying something. He's like, no, man. You got to go out and do this, and you have to go out and do this, and you need to do this, and you need to do this, yeah. and you can. You need to choose to do it, and you know, get the, do your homework, do whatever you got to do, but go out there and do it. So he's helped tremendously as an example on and off the drums, and he's quite literally, quite literally picked up the phone and called me or been in a conversation and told me things that I need to hear. That's those are the friends you want. They're not mm -hmm. the friends that tell you what you want to hear. They're the friends that tell you what you need to hear. And that's a sign of respect that they know you allow them to do this, to say anything and everything they think. And you respectfully yeah. listen. He's, a, he's unbelievable. I know. I know he is. He's yeah. He's as solid as the day is long. You know, he really is just trying it's like, I mean, it, yeah. I know, I'll, I'll, but all you have to do to make this live cast go three hours is, you know, and, and don't do this, but you do, you know, just, you mention a drummer and I'm just going to go off on everything great about them because, because when, when, when I look at who I would like to be, I realize that I'm not going to fall for that BS fake adage that, oh, I am what I am. We are what we are. We are yeah. whatever. And it's an excuse to be bad or be good. Whatever it is, an excuse, excuse, excuse. It's like, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We are made how we are. We're not changing any of that. But we can change who we become. And so when I look at the drummer or the person that I want to become, I need these examples in my life. And when I look at the drummer that I want to become, I literally see a grid. That's why I did the DVD on it. I see a grid and I see who I can become as a better drummer all the time in order to complete, at least to complete the grid. So I have a little bit of every single uh, module. So I at least can, can hang with it, play it a little bit and more so relate to people, relate to people yeah, that have taken sure. modules in this grid further than I, but, um, you know, I, you, I could talk all day about every single drummer because I really, I like a Terminator, have, have looked at them and kind of assessed who and what they are at the time that I've assessed them. And I've put it into my system at, for inspiration and also respect. That's great. Yep. 
I know that. I know. And 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 the and the respect is mutual, you know. I mean, all these guys like Dennis, like Dave Weckel, who I remember you meeting at at a uh, I think it was maybe Mike Stern at the Regatta Bar. You came with me to see Dave again. Some I, I think it was just before you moved to L.A. in the '90s, and I I I I could have this wrong, but I feel like I introduced you guys, and he knew who you were. He's like, oh, I I know who you are, man. I I've I've heard a lot about you, and you're like, you have, and and he said, I'm and you said I'm moving out to L.A. and he like gave you his number and said, call me when you get there, and and. Uh, no, I mean, but 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 the point being, but I'm thinking about the time, another time we saw him, we all went out to dinner with the guacamole. Is that what you're laughing about? Do you remember that? Do I have anything in my teeth? Well, <laughs> oh, oh, uh, well, I um, I am, I might have for- selectively forgotten a few things, but it's like, yeah, but yeah, but it's like it's it's the same thing with Dave. Dave is yeah. not afraid to tell you. I know. Dave's not afraid to tell me what he thinks. Hey, yeah. look, we, we 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 did a clinic together, and a fan had requested that I play "Lost Not Forgotten" by Dream Theater. So I was like, and I looked at the time, and I knew. I was like, well, it's like a three four minute window, and I'll, I'll get off the stage quickly. But I technically went over in my time, and Dave was waiting to go on, so uh, he let me hear it. He absolutely did not let me walk by the front of his drum set without calling me out and going, hey, Aunt Jeannie, hey, you know, like, hey. And it's like (laughs) my response to Dave wasn't, you know, trying to make excuse, you know, like, 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 you know, trying to be relativistic and make excuses and point the finger. I just I said, Dave, you're right. And I'm sorry. You're absolutely right. He says, yeah, but, you know, I got to do it. I know, I know, I know. You know, I'm glad he said it because yeah, you know yeah. what? Sometimes people need to hear certain things that are the truth. You can't, you can't be afraid of that. And I just, yeah. I love it. And I could talk all day about everything that he is great at that nobody else is going to do. So, and there we go. So back to the guacamole. What did I put it in my teeth or something? Yeah, you did. You did. It was after a daddy's, after a daddy's clinic or something. We went over to the, uh, what's it called? The Cactus Club, the place on Boylston street with candy Vermonti and everybody. And I, I think Dana Spellman was there and this is like 25 years ago or something. And, and you were like, you were so on that night. I think Kelly was there too. And, and you took like a big thing of guacamole and you looked up and you went, Oh, I got anything in my teeth. And it was just like a mouthful of guacamole. People at home have to envision it was, it was hilarious. I still laugh about it. Uh, I've stolen a lot from you. I've stolen a lot of your material. It's timing. See, a lot of comedy. <laughs> yes. Well, then, if, if, if <laughs> and, and, and you can't, but we all steal from each other. I mean, you yeah. know how much material I've taken from Dana. Dana's oh, yeah. provided a ton of material for me. But it's it's also the timing. It's like it's like McGee. M- McGee is the master. Oh. And this is, and by the way, this is uh, McGee is a a, a a dear best friend friend that um, got his start in the business with me drum teching due to a connection, due to Dana, due to a friend saying, "Hey, use my friend." Like, okay. And mm-hmm. by the way, watch out because he's quick witted and really funny, and he's not going to let you up for air. So yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's timing. Like you know, McGee will like have something to pin on you knowing that we're going to see each other again. And then he's going to unleash this comment in front of like, you know, a bunch of people. So part of my guacamole timing was knowing when to do it and, you know, to get the most amount of snot bubbles from people or or water spits or whatever, because it's not inherently a funny thing. Like like, like literally if I shoved it in my mouth now, it wouldn't be that funny. I'd be like, Hey, Jerry, right. you know, it's it's okay, funny. It's a little funny, but it's not like a nine funny. It's a four, yeah. number four funny, but it's not a nine. But that right. the right. timing of that probably elevated Jack that up into eight eight point three funny range. So Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's you're the same right. thing with yeah. it's the same thing with all the drummer 
Same thing with all the drummer hangs. Well, we've done it. You've been with right. me in numerous hangs. You know, it's like uh, it, it was great having a having having a margarita with Ian Pace from Deep Purple. But Dana, you know, the McGee, Peter, though, though, those guys were with me, and it's like you know to see Dana do his move with the margarita and the straw, and like after you have a sip and your eyes cross and you're like, you go after the straw. It's the timing. <laughs> And it's great to have see, to see Ian Pace, who we just met, dear, wonderful human being, insane yeah. drummer. It's just, it's like living life to see, to crack somebody up and then to have them and to have these guys also let loose and throw their humor out there and make you laugh. You know, to trade, it's like, it's like trading drum fills. You're trading yep. humor. It's, exactly. it's funny. It's fun. I didn't you know, have to, and it, and it, I, and it would be yeah. like, um, well, it's 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 well, well, people get. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say I don't even have to be there. I, I'm picturing it. I'm picturing it, and it's and it's hilarious to me because knowing Dana, I can totally see it. <laughs> so, I got to collect myself here. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, crazy funny stuff, and that's you know, oh. I, 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 I still use that move. I, 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 I took my, my sister. My sister has one of the best moves of all time, which is the glasses tip. She's the one I got it from. Where you know, because we, we would we would have some some sambuca with with um, with with one of our, our grandmothers with with Nana, and you know, Jody, my sister would be like. All right, didn't do anything to me, kind of a thing. And it's and it's it's a move. And it's a move that works really well. It's a really good move. And if you time it, you can get a lot of um, uh, you know you can get a lot of funny stuff happening. But what's interesting that people who haven't met me, fans especially, I am the same way with them. I'm not different in front of them than I am with you. Than I am with my own family than I am with people, you know, and everyone that knows me that's close to me. Yeah. They're sick of all the same jokes. They're sick of the moves, but they still laugh. They still laugh. And, you know, for fans to actually hang out with me and I don't change. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm the same way. I am the same yep. way with them. I'm the same way with them at a meet and greet. I'm the same way with them at a bar. I mean, we just we just had the John Petrucci universe um, finish, and um, you know, John kind of puts me. He kind of shoes me into that social situation, not literally, but you know, he knows that I'm going to be there entertaining fans. And and here's here are the numbers, Johnny. The numbers is that uh, the, the bar shut at. 11 p.m. or 12 p uh, 12 a.m. whichever one, um, and I closed it probably around three with <laughs> people around me the whole night. You know, we're bringing down a little something for everybody and yapping and howling and talking. And I'm not afraid to do impressions. I'm I, I'm not a, I'm not afraid to you know make people feel comfortable and also. Let them say whatever they want to say. Just yeah. believe it or not. Just shut up and listen. Me, just just let them go. So yeah, I mean, it's funny when you bring these things up. So I'm sure you yeah, can tell no, some it's, stories that we should. <laughs> I could I could tell some really funny stories, but I, that we we'll we'll do another one of these <laughs> down the road when when I have a better internet connection, and we'll we'll tell some of those stories. But I have to read you what um, what someone just said here. Uh, a man by the name of John Smith, could be his real name, might not be. Hey, Mike, you remember that time in early 2000s, you did an awesome clinic, Zilchin Clinic at a bar in Hollywood, Florida. Kind of remember because after the clinic, my friend Jason and I took you all out all night long. We left the club as the sun was coming up and rushed you to Miami airport just in time for your flight. <laughs> uh, thanks for the memories. Oh, yeah, DW Bone Break, yeah. He was he was the Zildjian rep of that at that time. So I don't know, it must have been like Resurrection Drums or somebody like that down there, or Ace Music. <laughs> I, I guess you remember. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, uh, I remember, you know, so the, <laughs> the, the funny thing is, is it's like um, all I was trying to do was give them ammunition so that they could put me in the same league as Horacio because Horacio's the king of – you know, going out with everybody and having a having a, a good time, and so I was just trying to compete with Horacio was all, which I can't do, but um, I, I I I gave it my best, and yep, it's like it's a what John, it's like I, I value that because it's it I would have done anything to be able to hang out with people that I looked up to and um, um, and people that I wanted to learn from. And you know what? There's a certain aspect of that where they say never do that. Like never hang out with your idols or the people you mm-hmm. look to. Never do it. Don't talk to them. Don't do this because they'll only disappoint you. So the thing is, that's in my mind. And I'm like, no, no, wait a minute. I'm not going to let another one of these cliche adages wreck my enjoyment in my life. Now, I'm not going to let it happen. I'm going to let these people hang out with me and I'm going to be myself and I'm going to you know, be accountable and um, make sure that, if, that when that's all over, that they that I made them happy. And I'm going to think about that. So, yeah, I mean, no that's one's great. perfect. And I have been, you know, I mean, for the most part, I mean, if you if you try to touch me and get me before, um, you know, uh, before a show and I'm on my way to the show and I've had my hair grabbed and my shirt pulled and I've had awful things said to me, well, then I'm going to react in that case. But then that person's going to go tell a million people that I'm, uh, you know what, we, when, when and I was just only defending myself. And there's those, those small little occurrences, which generally, you know, my whole interaction with people has been fun. And it's been like really a good time for me. So I like it. Yeah. That. Exactly. No, I, I know. I think, I think, 99 and nine tenths of anybody who ever has ever interacted with you has only like a fun, positive memory and experience. You know, I mean, that's, it's just, that's cause that's who you are. You know, I mean, that's just who you are. Um, and, and the great Joe Vitale, by the way, is watching and he says, hello, Joe is my guest next week. And Joe, hopefully I'll get this internet thing squared away. This is, uh, I don't know what the, um, Maybe we need to pay the cable bill here. I don't know, but Comcast bill. Um. <laughs> hey, John, look, if people out there understand, look, at everyone out, everyone out there understands, you know, it's just something that, that, that we've all had to deal with at times. I mean, I jacked mine up to a gigabit to, uh, you know, make sure that it works for Zoom and everything, and every once in a while... It pauses, it does what it does, because, you know, the whole neighborhood or, you know, wherever I am, it could be the the studio or its location, a home location or whatever location, it's going to happen. So whatever, don't worry about it. All right. Well, I appreciate it, Mike. And I'm glad we still have folks watching and enjoying and commenting. And um, I'm just going to ask you just... You know, we're getting to the hour point anyway, and I won't keep you a whole lot longer, but I was going to maybe just ask you to talk for a second about, um, you know, I, I've been around you many times before gigs, before like a clinic, and maybe you could talk a little bit about like your warm up routine and um, just any any things you'd recommend to people that I know you you definitely or you used to have a, a routine where you'd warm up and get both of those. Yeah. So, um, right. So the warm up, but a, a lot of the warm up routine has focused around the mental state because you can't simulate, you really can't simulate being on stage and the, and the musculature and the nerves and the grabbing of the drumsticks and the effect on the muscles. It's hard to simulate like that. So on, a, a, so there's a mental aspect, and physical aspect, the physical aspect is easier to understand. With the physical aspect, you just want to get the motion. You want to get your hands and feet to just be reminded of the right motions. That's one thing. So it doesn't take much, like short, little, fast bursts. Short, little, fast bursts. And very, very, very slow, full motions. 
very slow full motions, and then some very fast little bursts just to get the motion and mm. also to stretch for your hands, to stretch this thumb muscle because yep. you'd have to practice for 25, 30 minutes to get the muscle to warm up this much. So you might as well, quote, warm the muscle up. So that's on the physical level. Uh, many people stretch, and that's good. I just don't believe in doing it too much because then it, it releases things that make you too dopey. But for me, it does anyway. It takes away mm -hmm. my edge. But um, And that's the point for some people. But anyway, mentally, it's about visualizing yourself on that stage before you go there. So when you go there, the shock of the stage doesn't create, and this is key, it doesn't take your energy and steer it into the nerves. It's like a Ford in the road. It doesn't steer you on the street with the nerves, but it steers you into the adrenaline street. The adrenaline is good. The amped up is good. I mean, the whole thing about being totally relaxed is a myth because certain muscles have to be flexed in order for other muscles to be relaxed. So it's mm. what do you flex? What is tense? What is not? It's not nothing is tensed up. Are you kidding me? It's like try to, try to tell that to a weightlifter. Yeah, be all loose, man. You can't be all loose to push your weight. You can't be all loose to do certain base drum moves. Certain muscles have to be flexed. doesn't mean you are tense. Of course not. Um, but if you are tense, there's nothing you can do about it. So the thing to do is to visualize yourself there and know which muscles to flex, know which ones not to flex. That brings you back to warming up, stretching maybe the thumb muscles and doing short little speed bursts and full stroke just to get you in the mental state to know what to do so you can focus on that. So that's the warm-up routine. Wow, it's mental with visualization and it's physical with these two specific things. That's great. And you, do you cover that when you, when you do lessons, when you do teaching, you, I'm sure you, you get into some of that stuff philosophically and, and mentally, physically, all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. well, uh, every, every, every single time I teach, and I don't care. That's why beginners can do it. Or if quote advanced can do it. It's like, it's because I'm the same with both. And that's why both join my classes because to, to, to some advanced players, some of the things I'm saying are new. So you have to start over with it. You might as well do it right. Um, and the bottom line is I do it with everybody. I explain the perspective. I explain why you're doing this. I explain how it works, what it is, where it's applicable, when it's applicable. I mean, I go over all the who, what, whys, and whens. And so it just it may, it really helps people get what's going on and um, either buy into the system or not. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like yeah. why the, it's why some sports teams are successful. It's why so very few coaches are always successful because they understand that their system doesn't have to be perfect, but what has to be perfect is everyone buying into the system. If everyone buys eyes into the system and the team is unified so i get students always in the classes and me and every always to buy into the system because at least it can't be refuted if there's something wrong with it well well uh, i'm all ears and you know i have not done everything perfectly believe it or not and so i've learned to evolve it uh anyway yeah everyone gets it john everybody gets the same treatment that's great that's great well mike i'm, I'm thinking maybe if We'll, we'll kind of wrap it up today, um, but maybe we can do another one of these in a couple of weeks. And and because I, I had more stuff I wanted to get into, but with the Internet being a little weird, we can we can just kind of do a, a fresh one. We can talk about like coming up with drum parts and, and, you know, more of the stuff that I know a lot of not more, but some stuff I know a lot of people are going to want to, you know, hear about. With a with a better connection. Good. Absolutely. All right. And, and, you know, I, I know, yeah. like you say, it is what it is. I, I won't keep apologizing for it. <laughs> you handsome devil, you. Yeah. Still All as right, cute so as ever. I guess we're good. We're good. Hang tight for one second. If you were, I'm going to end the stream and I'll come back to you and me in the room, but I want to thank everybody and, and for watching today 
and being patient. I know the connection was a little bit weird, but I think when I put this up on YouTube, I, I think it's probably going to be better. It's going to sound good. So please check my YouTube channel a little later today and, uh, and watch out for part two with Mike Mangini, where we really get into like some deep, 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 deep shit, heavy duty stuff. So, all right. <laughs> Thanks for watching everybody. Mike, hang tight for one second. <laughs> you you got to, you got to, you, you 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 have to bleep bleep out the word bleep out the word. <laughs> oh, bleep out the word shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Hang on, Mike. I'll see you in one second.